Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. Before we kick off this week's episode, just a quick ask. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to make sure that you never miss an episode, never miss out on any of the strategies and tactics that we're sharing to help you continue charting your own path to freedom. And if you'd like to go deeper with any of this, we've launched a free Facebook group, which you can join at pathtofreedom.com backslash group. And we've linked that in the show notes to make it easy for you to find. All right. Thank you again for being here. Let's drop in to the episode. Hey, what's up, everyone? And welcome back to the Path to Freedom podcast. Today, I'm joined by Melanie Richards. And Melanie is the founder and CEO of GoGlo, uh, which I find to be a very interesting concept that that I got introduced to probably six months or so ago. Um, and and I'm really excited to have Melanie here and and learn more about it and and share with the audience. So uh, with that, Melanie, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. So so. Let's just start off. What is what is GoGlo? Because I think it's um, like I said, it's it's interesting, it's unique. I think at first glance, some people are going to see it and and you know maybe kind of roll their eyes and be like, oh, well, this is nothing new. Uh, but it really is once you kind of understand exactly what you guys do and and how you do it. So um, start us off with just kind of a quick overview. What is GoGlo? GoGlo is a custom airbrush tanning so that we do one service. We specialize in it. We're experts. Um, and it's elevated experience, meaning that our salons are all white. They're beautiful. They yeah. are, um, you know, like spray tanning. We just need to start and lay it on the table. Like spray tanning is, is just kind of a grimy industry. And we've all sort of accepted some really low standards. And so when I started the company, I wanted to just change everything about the experience and make it better and elevate it. Um, and that's what we've been able to do for the past 12 years. Yeah, it's Cause that, that's like when I first heard about you guys, I did kind of roll my eyes. I'm like spray tanning. Um, cause I didn't understand the difference. And, you know, to your point, I think the, the tanning industry, whether it be tanning beds or spray tanning, or, you know, even the, the, you know, stuff that you can bring home and, and do yourself. And, you know, hopefully you don't turn orange, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you know, and hopefully it's not permanent if you do. Like, I think it's just got kind of a, a negative connotation. You know, like I'm, I'm from North Carolina and, you know, used to go to Myrtle Beach for spring break. And so I just think of like cheap uh, Myrtle Beach spray tan booths, you know, when, when I think about that sort of thing. But, you know, as we've said, this is different. And I want to get into a little bit of the the weeds in terms of how it's different, the the technique, the application. But the first point you made is, is I think, a very good point to highlight, which is it's a totally different look and feel like the, the vibe is totally different. You know, we'll link you guys website um, and social media. And I'd encourage people to go, you know, look at some of these locations. I've got I've got a picture up here and they're they're beautiful and it's a very high end uh, kind of look and feel just in terms of the aesthetics. Um, and it sounds like that was very intentional on your part. Very intentional. And, you know, everything that you mentioned about what is wrong with tanning and what is wrong with the industry makes this such an amazing opportunity. And so, you know, while I was building GoGlow and building it up to the standards of what I think that this, that spray tanning should be, it's a professional skin treatment. And mm-hmm. all, all of the negative, all the negative stuff I sort of picked apart made better. And I think that we've all just been dealing with an industry and tolerating it, to be honest with you. You know, yeah. it was just tolerating. Everyone's just like saying their prayers. They're going to the local Susie in her garage and they're just like, okay, well, I know something's going to be screwed up. What is it going to be? Um, I'm going to smell and be sticky, but at least I get some sort of color. Right. So you take that and you've got an entire like country just accepting pretty low grade standards and ha- to have the opportunity like a go to step out and just say, OK, guys, we're done here. Like this is we're done with all of this nonsense. You should be expecting a beautiful, natural color. Nobody should ever look at you and say, oh, you have a spray tan. Like that's the worst. Yeah. Thing, right. We want something that's natural. That And so with our solutions that I developed and they're proprietary only to go glow, it's that it matches exactly your skin tone, what your skin tone can handle, because a lot of the orange comes from low grade solutions. It comes from putting the wrong colors on. Mm. everything has been done so wrong. And so that's what makes it, it's like, I love to hear like everybody's pain points. Cause you're like, 
I got an answer for that, right? Because that's what I did is I just step-by-step step just made everything better and elevated it. And when you said about the salons, they're white for a reason because we're stepping into the space and we're saying clean beauty, clean ingredients, organic ingredients. Mm -hmm. And then you know what you should also expect? You should also expect that your salon that you get your spray tan in shouldn't be painted black. It shouldn't be painted brown. <laughs> like they're hiding all that crap that's floating in the air. And guess what? All of that solution that's in the air, the FDA says it's not safe for inhalation. So we're going to have a big problem. Wow. Yeah. The, the industry has got some, some issues. And, and you know, um, about six years ago, I saw this and I was like, you know, this solution is kind of going everywhere and, I, and I'm not liking this. And so, you know, I didn't I didn't want to be a manufacturer of equipment, but here I am. You know, we, we did I did a full engineering of an overspray booth We're patent pending. So the overspray booth that we have in our salons completely controls the airflow, filters it six times and then cleans the air. So you're getting none of it breathing into you and you're also we're able to control the spray. So it goes exactly where we want it to go. Wow. Okay. There's a lot I want to unpack there. The, the health thing in particular, because, and this is something, cause look, I've, I've never been a spray tan, mm -hmm. um, yes. you know, user myself. Right. And I'm, you know, I'm not opposed to it, but like one, I've never, never really needed it. Cause I tend to have a, you know, more of a natural tan and like, you know, in the summer when I'm in the sun, mm -hmm. you know, I have no problem getting and keeping a good tan and we live at the beach. Right. So we right. get out and, and get plenty of sun, but you know, like my wife's done it. And, you know, especially during the winter, if we're going to a wedding or something like that, she's tried yep. all different types of stuff. And, and there are some real pain points. You know, you mentioned the smell, you mentioned being sticky. And I think you have to, you know, you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can even take a shower and, and rinse off with, with a lot of these products. But me just knowing how they smell, mm -hmm. you're like, there's no way this is good for you in terms of you know, what you're inhaling, but also, you know, what you're putting on your skin that's seeping into your skin. Cause mm -hmm. you know, I think in this day and age, more and more people are really looking yeah. at and scrutinizing the ingredients in not only the food they're eating, what they're drinking, but also, you know, their, their body wash, their shampoo, yeah. their deodorant. And we've all heard, you know, certain types of deodorant have, you know, chemicals that are, are getting into your body that are really not good for you. Same thing with lotion. And I've been hearing stuff about sunscreen lately. Um, so how, how big of a difference yeah. are, are you guys from the, the health standpoint? From the health standpoint, that is, that is, you know, one of the crux of why I, I had to go back and look at the solutions, what the ingredients were, the high alcohol content, um, the, the baseline, though, and I and I really love having this piece of education for people listening, is that dihydroxyacetone is the active ingredient, and what that is is just a molecule that's been removed from a sugar beet. So it's a natural um, element, right? But they they mm -hmm. named it dihydroxyacetone, whatever. Everyone's everything's got a name, but it's a yeah. sugar beet molecule, and that sugar beet molecule reacts with the amino acids on your skin and the proteins and browns it. So when it oxidizes, so it's just like if you cut an apple and you left an apple out, the air okay. oxidizes the oxygen. The same yeah. kind of thing is happening on your skin. So you take that active ingredient and then we wrap it with hyaluronic, vitamin C, antioxidants for free radicals. So it's a skin treatment. So you take the old school of the spray tanning solutions and it was like bronzers and dyes and, you know, but the base, the, this is what's so great about spray tanning. And, and it just took a, it took a wrong turn really basically, but is that it's a natural process that's happening on your skin. There's nothing bad with that. What they're putting into the solutions, right. To get it out of the gun, all the alcohol, all these things. Um, I just broke down and took a look at everything and worked with the chemist to put together our own solution. And it has everything to do with the pH balance of your skin. So there's a lot of science in it, but at the same yeah. time, it's, yeah. it's pretty simple when you, when you break it down, you know? So yeah. And I think that, you know, especially with TikTok and the trend of like 15, 16, 17 year olds, they are about skincare. They're turning those labels around they want to know the ingredients and i am just mm -hmm. like hallelujah you know like yes 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 please look at those ingredients um and you, it's just it's an exciting time right now because not only are we identifying and saying hey this is a huge pain point we're going to be the national leader we're going to set the standards and we've got an entire generation coming up that that really cares about their skin and making sure that they're not burning they're not peeling they're you know and so you've got an entire generations that that's we have a you know uh we've outsmarted the sun because 
we're kind of replacing the sun in that nessus in that in that part of the the process. Yeah. Definitely go out and get your vitamin D a hundred percent. But the ill effects of burning, like we used to do when we were younger, you know, I'm like, yep. I don't know how many times my nose peeled you know, while I was at the mm-hmm. lake. You know, it's just like wild. But you have an entire generation that's coming up and this thing is only gonna get a longer, longer runway. Yeah, it's it definitely seems like good timing. Um, so I'm I'm curious though, like let's back up a little bit. How did how did you get interested in this in the first place? Like what what was it that sparked your interest to really, you know, kind of dissect how the the spray tan industry, you know, has been up until go glow and and you know, then you kind of saying, All right, this is broken. Mm-hmm. We need to figure out a way to fix it. Were you already in the business in some capacity or what what kind of drove that? I was I couldn't have been further from the beauty industry. I was like, <laughs> okay probation and parole officer for uh, 14 years. Oh, yeah. yeah. Natural progression. <laughs> you know, why wouldn't I? Yeah, um, right. so I specialized in domestic violence and working with women and children and crisis. And um, I was the probation officer on a specialized team with police officer and a prosecutor. So it was really a high intense uh job and, and career. And I loved it. I was very passionate about it. Um, you know, it came a, a, a really unfortunate case um, with one of my victims who was murdered with her mother and her grandfather. And through that, I, I really had to take a step back and just un, just sort of unpack the effect it had on me. I ended up with PTSD and it was just like I had wow. to testify and all of this. And it was just like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I was at that time I was getting married. I knew that I was going to go to the kid thing. And I was just thinking about pr- just processing, you know, am I doing this for the rest of my life? Cause I don't think sure. I can. I'm bringing home tons of stuff. And yeah. So I went to Aveda here in Minneapolis, you know, they're, they're worldwide as far as, um, uh, Ayurvedic ingredients and holistic. And so I went there for esthetology just as a way to just sort of calm my mind and, and do something different, something creative. I graduated and I was looking, just basically going to Mexico to celebrate with a girlfriend of mine. And I'm like, well, I can't go. You, you, you can, I'm a super, super pale Minnesotan, like blue eyes, just I, I <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes in the sun. It's like done for me. Right. I'm high. Yeah, especially in Mexico, like the sun just hits different down yeah. there for sure. So I went looking for a spray tan and it was basically the mystic tan booth, you know, those like human car washes, yeah. they lock you in. It's just like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And I just I up. couldn't do that as an, I knew the ingredient, I knew I was going to be orange, but I found a makeup artist in the area and she was doing it um, with a tiny little brush. So I literally am like, you think about holding like a spray tan position. I held it for almost an hour while this little tiny brush over my entire body. But, wow. but I walked out and I was like, I'm actually a brown color. I'm not an orange, right? And this this completely complements my skin tone. Bopping out of there, so happy. Couldn't even believe it. Got to Mexico. I was already in my cute dresses looking good. And I was like, I, I want this done. I want this done every week. But for me, you know, it was $85. And this was back in 2010. That's a lot of yeah. money, you know? And I was like, I can't afford that. So basically, I maxed out. I had a $5,000 credit limit on a credit card. And I maxed it out. And I bought a spray tan machine and just started buying solutions and teaching myself. And I was thinking, well, I'm just going to teach my sister how to do it. She can spray me. I'll spray her. But then it just kept going and going. And then I started processing, well, why couldn't I do this mobile? You know, I'm, I'm totally bootstrapped. And so I, um, after work, I still worked in my full blown career. And after work, I would just throw the machine in my truck and I would go to people's houses. And it, the booking just kept going. And, and I had my first employee within, I want to say, four months and to start having babies and being in the married life. And so I worked on the business. And so that blessing there kind of helped it grow quicker. Hey, everyone, we'll get right back to the episode, but I wanted to quickly share a free resource with you. If you're curious about franchise ownership and want to learn more about how countless people, including myself, have leveraged franchising as a way to create more freedom for themselves and to take control of their livelihood, I've put together an ebook. It's called Franchise Wealth Creation. And it's the perfect starting point for anyone that's just curious to learn more about this whole franchise thing and how I've helped hundreds of other people navigate all the steps involved in understanding and researching franchising. So click the link in the show notes, fill out a short form. I'll send you the ebook. I think it's a great starting point if you're curious at all about learning more about franchising. All right, let's get back to the episode. Yeah, I love that type of story, though, where it's like legit, just kind of bootstrap, Mm -hmm. no fear, right? We're just going to, you know, this this seems like it's making sense. One piece just kind of keeps falling in place after the other. And um, 
yeah. that's that's such a cool story. And you know, I, I can certainly see where you know the career you were in before. Like, I, I can't imagine having to you know work on those types of cases day in day out especially if you if you knew you were going to start having kids like we have a good friend that used to work in the da's office and um she was not out in the field at all but um you know all all her department did was like child sex crime oh, stuff no terrible right but oh, then and, and she's got three kids like about the same age as our three kids. So it was like shortly after they had their first kid, she's like, I can't keep, you can't. like, I can't be exposed to this all day and then go home and be like a normal right. <laughs> mother. You know, it's, right. it's, it's too heavy, I think, but um, obviously a great, a great cause. Mm -hmm. um, so was the, so you said you went to school for, to be an esthetician? Yeah, I did the um, Aveda esthetician program. So it's about 650 hours for Minnesota. So how, how helpful has that been, you know, as, as you've built out GoGlow, is it relevant or not necessary? <laughs> That's a very good question. For Go for yeah, GoGlow Go specifically, Glow. I mean, well, nothing. A, yeah. So SEology is a study of skin. Um, you know, it was great to, to just really understand all the, the dermal layers and, and everything with skin. But at the same time, GoGlow, I believe, is successful um, for for a few reasons, but you have to have that, that backbone, that tenacity, that grit, that, you know, I'm going to figure it out. And I just have that. And I think that a, a strong business sense, and I always laugh because I went to college and I, I was in the liberal arts school, right? I did criminology, sociology, and psychology. I, I headed over to the business school and I took an accounting class and I failed. I was like, I don't belong over here in the business school. I was kind of just joke about it. Like I failed every business class I ever took. Like it's crazy. But if you have that um, that sense of, of an, an, a, a passion and a direction and you, and you know like for Go Glow, I built it around what I wanted. I, I'm I'm a I'm a normal chick, right? And I expect yeah. clean, great ingredients. And so I just market it to, to myself. And and that's what every that's what everybody's kind of looking for is just honesty and transparency from a from a business, whether it be beauty or not, but yeah. then also be approachable, right? And so yeah. that's where you know, Go Glow, I was talking to Front Street, my partners for franchising, mm -hmm. and they're like, Mel, you have no, where, where's your mark? What are you spending on marketing? And I, and I was like, I'm, I'm year like 11 at this point. I was like, I don't, I don't pay for I don't pay marketing. <laughs> and Which I'm, is incredible. Um, that's incredible. And then, you know, if, if you want to start spending some, you're just pouring fuel on the fire right. at that point, you know, if you can build the business for 11 years and keep it growing without having to, to spend on marketing. That's, that's incredible. And yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. Like the best businesses always seem to come out of someone solving a problem that they've identified. And, and in so many cases, it's a problem that they've personally run into. And that was kind of where the, the genesis or the idea for the business started. I think, you know, if you go into it saying, I'm going to start a business. All right. What now I got to figure out what I want to do. Like there's people that have done it that way and, and, you know, it can yeah. be successful, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's probably, it's probably a little more difficult. You're forcing it. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that stands out to me with your story that you've shared so far is, I think a lot of people, like, even if they identified the problem like you did and said, okay, I have some ideas for a solution. So many people are just going to sit back and over plan and over analyze and, and try to think, okay, well, you know, I don't have enough money saved up, so I got to work on that. Or I don't have all the answers. I don't have a full business plan built out yet. And, you know, next thing you know, three, four years have gone by and they either lose interest and move on to something else or they start, but they could be three years ahead of where they, they were if they would have just started taking some action and, and just not feeling like you have to have it all figured out in order to get started. Was that, was that something that you feel came naturally to you? Or do you remember having these kind of conversations with yourself? Like, Hey, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta start somewhere. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know, um, what it, what it is about me in the sense of, I never think I can't do something, <laughs> you know, mm. it's just, I, I will figure it out. Um, I don't have that fear of failure. I think that, um, in, in every instance of my life and, 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 you know, bad things happen to everybody, right? And it's just yeah. how you bounce back from it and how you problem solve your way through it, your critical thinking skills. 
Um, and so I, I, I never, I've never written a business plan. Like, I don't even know if this is good for this podcast. I'm like, I feel this, but, but it's honest. It's, it's honest in the sense of like, this is all intuitive and this is all knowing exactly, um, my, my business and my clientele and what I, what, what I want to provide. Um, you know, I, I just keep going. I, I don't, I don't have that stop button. I just, I'll figure it out. You know, yeah. I have. So far. I love that. Unless, I love that. I mean, look, we've got three kids and the oldest is seven and then three and two. Right. And like, I, I think as a father, one of the biggest lessons I could teach my kids is that, you know, like you said, don't fear failure. <laughs> right. And, and it's really never actually failure unless you give up. Right. Um, you know, like you said, everyone's going to make mistakes. Everyone's going to mess up. We're all going to try things that don't work or they don't go as well as we would have hoped, but you keep going, you learn from it. And, and it's never really a failure unless you just quit and, and walk away from it. And, you know, for me, you know, my wife and I, uh, own franchise businesses. We sold, uh, one of our franchise businesses last year, you know, we've started other businesses and, like, I, I don't remember the exact moment, but at some point, you know, I, I was able to kind of flip a mental switch where I I was more afraid of regret mm -hmm. than I was of failure. Yes. Right. And I think if you can get there. Yes. Um, that's a game changer. And it sounds like, you know, maybe maybe your your switch has always been on, you know, when it comes to that. Whereas some people like myself, like I had to kind of, mm -hmm. you know do some internal work and, and get past it. But, um, and I, th I think that, you know, it's, it's a hundred percent that, and I, I, I think of one instance when it was, um, a couple of years ago and I was deciding, am I going to franchise or am I not? Right. And I knew what I had was great, but if I didn't have the right partners, I didn't want to, I, nobody wants to limp out. Right. And so uh, luckily I did get to partner with front street and, and they're, they're phenomenal. But if I didn't, I was going to be thinking like, okay, Mel, but in 10 years when somebody, you know, nobody, ha nobody's caught up to go glow yet, but thinking about it and like somebody has already grabbed that and I, and I knew how to do it. And, and, you know, I knew I could have done it the yeah. regret. I would never live with that. I would never right? live with that. Yeah. Never, never. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you can't change that, right? Like if you, if you start and have to course correct, I mean, that's, you can, you can make changes, yeah. you can pivot, you can adjust but you cannot go back and fix regret. Yes. I mean, I guess you could always start even down the road, right? But to your point, if, if it's your passion, you know, you know? Yeah. Like, and if there's already an industry, right, where now you're the you're the front runner in this kind of, you know, subsector of the larger tanning industry. Yes. You know, if you would have waited 10 years, you know, there could be already several other dominant players and now you're just kind of, you know, copycatting what they did, even if originally you had kind of the ideas. Um, can you talk a little bit about your partnership with, with front street? So Eric Van Horn, um, was actually on this show not too long ago talking about front street and kind of what they do and, and, you know, the types of brands that they're partnered with and, you know, just from their perspective, what, what they're trying to do with front street. Um, but, I'd love to hear a little bit from your perspective. Uh, sounds like you had the foresight to realize, hey, you know, this franchise thing is new. So yeah. it'd be in my best interest to go find some good partners. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to to find the right partners? Because, you know, Front Street Equity is certainly not the only firm out there, you know, well, able to help emerging franchise brands. Yes. Um, in my world, it kind of was because when okay. I was building, when, when I was building Go Glow, I, I, you know, go on my morning walks and I would listen to Eric's podcast. Ah, so okay. My, my first, um, storefront was in Minnesota. My second one was in Chicago and river North. And I sort of made that leap to sort of test myself and to say, what if you went into a completely different market? What would happen? Could this, could this stand the test of time? And, and it, it mm. did, it did really well. Still is. But at the same time, I was I was listening to Eric. He's just obviously very interesting too. But processing um, if this is a franchise, and so while I'm building it for myself and building it for the next location, the next location, and the processes and making it, there's a part of me that's also building it to be like if 
if I sold a franchise, somebody walks in, how do they do A, B, C, D, and E? So as yeah. I'm building, as I'm building the brand, as I'm building the company, I'm, I'm kind of structuring it to be like, I want to have that option. I might not take that option, but I want to have it. So Smart. around um, 20, 22, what year are we in now? 22, yeah. I was, um, I joined Eric's mastermind for his, for franchisors. And I immediately emailed him and I was like, Hey, Eric, you know, I've listened to you forever, but at the same time, um, I'm going to send you some information about my company. Give me the good, bad, the ugly, like, is this franchisable or not? Like, cool. Like, just, just let me know. And he, uh, uh, emailed me back, asked a few more questions, sent him some information. He's like, I gotta get my partner, Jeff on this call too. So then we had our first phone call and I just really, they're really genuine. Yeah. Uh, guys, they're very passionate about franchising. They're very passionate about bringing quality and yep. consistency. And you know, when you when you meet people or you partner, you're just to me the most important thing is their character. Mm -hmm. and then everything from that, then you go to the next step and you go to like their experience and everything. And so these guys are are truly just really solid human beings. Um, yep. Yeah. So then we went through the whole due diligence and everything, and and, and then you could see how like Jeff Her's brain is just on fire it's nothing to watch 24 7 yeah she's out, you know going crazy and it's just yeah. wild yeah so um you know for me it's been front street and and i got lucky and i'm blessed and i'm happy and we have a really good um strategic partnership so they are there for me to help you know see the roadblocks they, they say like you know they bubble wrap their brands and that's really true we spent a lot of time building before we even set it up for offering and so you know our um our second franchisee who came to us from European Wax Center, he was the uh, chief experience officer over at European Wax and took him public. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so wow. him and his wife um, bought um, some units of GoGlow. So he's our second one. And he's just like, you know, you guys are, are 10, 15 years ahead of what European Wax Center was when I walked in. You know, it was like he's when you're building it, you got your head down and you're just trying to you know build the best, build the best. And then when somebody from the outside comes in and who has all that experience and says, you guys are so far ahead, your structure is so far ahead. Um, it's just, you know, it's a really good compliment to, and to have a franchisee of that caliber of that experience. Oh yeah. It's unbelievable. And his wife, Erin came from Victoria's <laughs> Secret. She was a high up on there. So it's just, Oh like, really? Wow. And being in the marketing is just on fire. So yeah, that speaks volumes because I mean, European wax is mm -hmm. massive at this point, mm -hmm. you know, clearly one of the leaders in the, uh, the waxing space and, um, yeah, to, to, to hear, Hey, you know, your brand, cause you started franchising in 2023. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So you're a year in, if that <laughs> at this point, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, to hear that, you know, you're, you're so far ahead, but you know, it sounds like you had the foresight to start really documenting the mm -hmm. the processes uh even before you had decided that franchising was for sure the way you're going to go so i think that's something you don't see all that often or at least you know from from my perspective i don't see a lot of times it's you know five six however many years into the business and then the idea of franchising starts getting kicked around and, right. and a lot of the necessary things have not really been done so you got to go back and then you know, the foresight to partner with uh, someone like Front Street Equity, I, I, you know, it doesn't surprise me that you're, you know, as far along as you are. And um, I don't know Jeff as well as I know Eric, but Eric's been a, uh, a, a huge mentor to me over the years and, and a good friend, but um, I've learned so much from him. And, and those two guys, I mean, they're their experience and their track record and franchising kind of speaks for themselves, but they're really interesting uh <laughs> duo as well you know because like totally different personalities and and you know kind of vibes that they give off but um so i want to i want to make sure well before we go there I, I, part of why i was asking you about the the partnership with with front street is that i want to make sure the audience you know i want to make sure this really lands with the audience and and you know you already kind of iterated this but you know, there's a big, big difference in, in you know, evaluating an emerging franchise concept that's done the things that you've done and has the types of partnerships that you've done, right? Because how many, how many franchise locations do you have open right now? Uh, we have five in their pop-up stage because we allow them to open pop-ups before while they're doing their build-outs. Right, them. which I, I definitely want to talk more about that. All right, so that's, I mean pretty small, right? Compared to a lot of the franchises out there that someone could be 
investigating. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people almost immediately write off an emerging brand, right? Hey, if they don't have a hundred, you know, locations open, I'm not interested because I want the track record. I want, you sure. know, all the data, you know, of, of how the franchisees are performing. And I believe there's a lot of candidates that that is the direction they should go in, right? They're probably not going to be the best fit for something that's, that's a little more early stage, but there's challenges with that. Finding good territory is tough. Um, you know, if, it, it can feel a lot less entrepreneurial mm-hmm. for you as the franchise owner if you plug into a very established, very mature system, right? Like if you were to newly become a McDonald's franchisee today, like you don't really need to put your creative hat on very often because oh. McDonald's has just got it dialed in, right? Like there's this is the way we do it and we don't really vary from that at all. I think a lot of people that are exploring business ownership, they want to get into something where, yes, there is systems and processes and support. There's kind of some guardrails, but within that room to think creatively and yeah. uh, have a little more autonomy and, and really feel like an entrepreneur. So um, I, I, I wanted to just kind of reiterate that point that in my eyes, you know, when, when a young brand like GoGlo has done the right things up front and partnered with the right people, you get the best of both worlds, Mm -hmm. you know, right. You get everything that attracts people to emerging brands, right. Great territory wide open in most markets at this point, right. More entrepreneurial. So the leadership team. That's right. I'm yeah, definitely- that's a huge one. Yeah. So they're they're getting all of my brain dumps about like, you know, grassroots and what I did here, what I did there. I'm texting with them, all, you know, all the time. Yep. And I think that access to to this beginning phase isn't for everybody. And we don't want you know, we're very particular who we're bringing on right now because these people have to have that entrepreneurial spirit, that, that spirit of figure it out. We're going to give you the we're going to give you the structure. We're going to pour everything into you. However, you're still a business owner. Like, don't yeah. forget that part of it you are the business owner. We'll get right back to the episode in just a minute. But if you've been considering business ownership, if you're already a business owner looking to expand and you're curious about franchising, I'd love to connect with you, answer any initial questions that you have, talk about a specific franchise and detail the exact process that I use and have taken hundreds of people through to help them understand franchise ownership find the right franchise for them and conduct the necessary due diligence. Click the link in the show notes if you'd like to schedule a free, no obligation strategy call. I look forward to talking with you. And now back to the episode. Yep. Yep. And I think like you mentioned grassroots, right? Like that's where, you know, in in most of these franchise businesses, there there should be room for autonomy, right? And because everyone's going to have their own style, right? Their own, uh, you know, way of communicating and different ideas of how they can get out into the community and create awareness. I mean, everyone's got their own circles and, and networks. And that's where, you know, you're probably seeing some of this already with the the handful of franchisees that you have. Someone goes out and tries something you've maybe not tried it before they come back and like, yo, check this out. This is what I did. And you know, we got 10 clients from it or or whatever the success story is. And that stuff starts to snowball uh, over time. And that becomes um, part of the next franchisee we say this worked, let's try, you know? And so they they, like, when we talk about the entrepreneurial spirit, this is exactly what it is. You may come up with GoGlo, but watch this. You're going to help build this amazing structure too. You know, and I think that's why I just keep going back to the the partners that we're choosing right now. It's a two way street. We're very, um, you know, we're we're very uh, concentrated on who exactly what their spirit is, what their tenacity is, what their resilience is, you know, because this is an emerging brand. But the payoff on that is like you get the best territories you're going to get, you know, when when the national PR hits. Holy cow. You know, it's. You, you're the one, you're the one on the block there, you know? So yeah. th- there's, there's payoffs, but you have to have the right person. You have to have the right character. When there's just potentially so much more upside long-term 
you know, and, and every franchisee is probably going to have at least slightly different long term goals. Right. right. But I mean, you can just look at so many examples out there like, you know, we've mentioned European wax. Mm -hmm. So, you know, go follow some of the, the people that got in early mm -hmm. to European wax. Right. They've probably either had a massive exit yep. at this point or okay. they're very, very large franchisees within that system because, you know, look, go glow any other brand that's growing you know you're gonna end up with some franchisees that are not as good of a fit as others right and so the really successful franchise owners that get the model love the business know how to operate it they're gonna have a chance to keep growing should they want to right and like i i had um david shuck uh largest club pilates franchise owner right and he went in like a period of two or three years, he went in and got some private equity partners to to really bring some capital in and went from like, you know, six or eight locations to like 30 some locations. Now he's 60 plus and I think the rights to develop another 30 more, but he did it through a combination of opening new locations and nice. acquiring existing locations, most of which were franchisees that were kind of you know, below average performers for, for whatever reason. Um, so anyways, tons of upside, you know, not that there's not in, in other brands as well, but, but, but that's franchising. You know, we, and I, I think that some people lose sight of that, um, that how, how you can actually build your own structure within a franchise system and have an yep. exit. It's not just about the franchisors getting the exit. Like this is crazy. You go to these conferences in Vegas and all these pri private jets are flying in. These are franchisees. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I've started on the podcast. I've started doing like a short little uh, segment once every, every week or two, uh, just kind of spotlighting some of these really cool stories of yeah. franchisees that have built yeah. freaking empires for themselves. Yeah. And, you know, in that I've incorporated like some prof uh, professional athletes and celebrities that have gotten involved in franchising. But, you know, I always like to highlight, you know, it, not the Shaquille O'Neal's of the world, right? right? Like this guy, David Shuck, yeah. you know, he played college basketball. He started with a Liberty Tax franchise, you know, in his Liberty 20s, tax right? It seems to be the genesis for a lot of people. Isn't it? Isn't, that Isn't it? It's it's funny. There's a lot of uh, people doing <laughs> big stuff in franchising that that got their start with, uh, with Liberty Tax. So, um, you know, kind of back to GoGlo. So can you kind of walk us through like, You've, you've touched on it, but I want to make sure the audience gets kind of a clear picture of, all right, so what what is the experience as a customer, right? So can you kind of walk us through, like, once I come in the door, what happens? How are, How is the tan actually being applied? And, and, you know, how exactly is it going to be different than the other options yes. out there. Yeah. So when you walk into a Go Glow, um, like I, I said earlier, it's, you know, they're, they're bright, they're white, they're um, aesthetically, like you just feel so much better already. And, yeah. you know, the, the, we have um, spray tan specialists. We don't have like where you can c come in and you're just like, I, I just want to see Amy, you know, or book with Amy, you're booking a go glow. And so every one of our specialists are trained to the top. And so that's, what's also very attractive in as far as labor model and, and that sort of thing is that yeah. they're all trained and you come in for a go glow. And so, um, you know, your first, if we do a skin consultation, we take a look at the tone of your skin. We take, we talk about like, what did you have? what what products did you prepare with because it has everything to do with um you know the outcomes we talk about like a 90 percent is is basically how you prepare and we can do the specialty of the 10 percent and and the and the products and and the quality of the solution but if you come in and you have you know like dove soap on your ph is all messed up that's going to definitely affect the outcome and so we do a great um consultation of like what's on your skin how did you prepare how did you exfoliate um you know what is the occasion are you are you getting married that's a different glow than say like a honeymoon that's a that's a different glow right so we do all of the consult and then the client undresses into whatever they're comfortable wearing or not wearing um and then the the specialist goes and mixes the solution comes back in and applies the solution we apply a ph balancing because when you get into the science of skin it has everything to do with ph um and so we do a ph balancing treatment first to make sure that the the skin is is prepared for the go glow then we do the go glow and then we do a uh, like a moisture locking 
um, where it's like a like really juicy, like hyaluronic, so that while you're processing, your skin stays um, moisturized and stays has that plump, basically feeling um, and not sticky. And it helps with odor locking. We have Febreze technology, so any. When skin is processing, it's oxidizing with a dihydroxyacetone, it's going to give off a malodor, right? And malodor is some people have none and some people have a lot. And so we have this technology in our solution, um, in the aftercare solution that catches that malodor and, and stops it from being released. So you don't stink, right? So a lot, a lot of men actually joke in there. Like they say, you know, I can smell when I walk in the door if my wife has gotten a spray tan, right? Because yep. just that smell. Ugh. And so- yep. There's that part. And then, um, you know, and then afterwards, we make sure that they understand the aftercare, how to care for it, how long to leave the solution on. We have a rapid rinse where you can rinse before um, in about four, depending on your skin tone, four to five hours or so. And then you process for 24 hours. Dihydroxyacetone will process for 24 hours regardless. Okay, so it's always going to do that 24 hours. You can rinse the, the bronzers off earlier. And I think that's what's really great, too, with our bronzers is they're really natural. When you walk out, like you see people that literally they go out of the spray tan salon and they run and hide, right? They're like hidden away because yeah. they're processing and their, their bronzers are just funky. You look crazy. Yeah. Um, with Go Glow, I wear my bronzers. I'll go to an event wearing bronzers. I don't even rinse because it, there's that natural glow color. It's not a heavy, cakey, tan, gross, right? So I think it's yeah. really important. People have not pinpointed that. And that's what Go Glow has. And so when I say that I like built the company to my own taste, it's because I want to I want to get a spray tan and then I want to go to my event that night and still look great and then process and still live my life. I still have to go to the grocery store. I still have to go pick up my kids. But I don't want to look right. crazy. I don't want to look crazy doing it, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we have our, our full uh, skincare line that I developed that goes along with or without a go-glow. But it definitely complements, um, you know, processing, um, aftercare, a good hydrate lotion. We have a mousse that does it at home. It's so light and absorbs quickly. It doesn't have that sticky feeling again. They can actually give themselves a, yeah. a go glow at home. Okay. Yep. We just launched that about two weeks ago and it is. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. I'm super excited about it. Yeah. So, so, you know, all of that, you know, the, the process that you just walked us through, I'm not even going to try to, to <laughs> say some of the, the, you know, names of these things cause I'll butcher them, but you know, compared to other options out there, you walk in and everyone's kind of getting the exact same thing. Right. It's a, it's a, uh, I think they like, uh, um, I'm not gonna say the name of it, but it's like, do you want level one, two or three? It's just like, okay. you, know, why, you know, you don't go into your hair colorist and be like, I want, you know, this shade of this and mix this much bleach and that like, why, why are we doing this to our clients? Why are you? Great point. And the thing of it is, is that like, if I'm, if I'm walking in and I have literally snow white skin tone and I'm, gonna say, well, I want level five, you know, how embarrassing, like for go glow, we'd be like, um, absolutely not because you're, you're going to walk out and then you're gonna take a crazy picture on Instagram and be like, look at go glow, you know, yeah. hashtag go glow. <laughs> and you're gonna be like, no, <laughs> hashtag don't, you know? we did not recommend that. We want to go on record. We advised okay. against that. Exactly. Um, so it's, 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 it's being a professional side of this spray tan experience where people we we don't want people coming in and and being crazy with it right if if, if we're not the if we're not the place for you we're gonna do natural we're gonna do glowy we're gonna do healthy but if you like it comes around halloween time and, and it drives me absolutely insane people <sighs> guys are like i want to be a jersey shore you gotta spray me orange i'm like get out of here you know like <laughs> <laughs> have you had any donald trump's have you had anyone that that wants to come in and get get a yeah, yeah. orange tan to be donald trump yeah. for on Halloween, it's every single time, and every single time, I'm just like go to Mystic Tan, yo, like that's great. Go yeah. to one of those booths; it'll hit level three. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does. It does sound like there's there's more preparation that yeah. someone needs to do if they want to come in and really get the the full effect from Go Glow. So, do you find that do you find that that's deterring to anyone or or people that really really see the value and how you're doing things differently they're yeah. they're probably already got a skincare routine anyways so this right. is not right. that different from what they're going to be doing a couple days out anyways exactly and you know our clientele you know first timers for sure we have a we have a frequently asked question like we have this whole big breakdown and we, we literally like one to two before the days you're going to do exfoliation one day before you're going to do this because we really want to break it down as simple as possible but we definitely do acknowledge and understand that because the industry is the way it is we kind of have to unwind and unpack everybody's crappy habits and just say this is why you exfoliate 
two, two days before. You don't do it immediately before, you know, and there's science mm -hmm. behind all of it. And it does, I'm, I'm 100% open that it, it does become, it can be overwhelming for people who don't understand skincare. Right. But at the same time, when we are going through the consultation and then we're going through the aftercare, we're giving them the information of like, hey, if you use Dove, um, we don't want you to do that. It's going to strip all the natural oils from your skin. We have a great cleanse that's pH balancing. It keeps those natural oils on your skin that that your skin wants, it needs, but it will clean off any bacteria. And so you're going to be clean, but you want that natural oil in your skin so that when you use like a Dove or a soap, it's it's just stripping everything. It's stripping your natural oils. And that's where you get that tight, itchy skin. So we drop little nuggets of information so that they understand in their skincare routine, they're just going to change one little thing and it's going to make their skin happy. It's going to make their skin feel um, hydrated and moisturized, regardless if you have a go-glow or not. So we're also just a lot of skin education. Yeah, that makes sense. And um you know, I think, uh, like you said earlier, it's something that even younger people are, are paying more attention to. I mean, uh, my wife hardly ever listens to my podcast, so I probably won't get in trouble for this, but like, you know, as, as she's had kids and, you know, gotten a little bit older, like she's had to start yes. paying a lot more attention to her skincare routine. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, she didn't have to think about it. And she had, mm -hmm. you know, like beautiful, flawless yeah. skin. Yep. Um, so, and, and then again, like we already touched on more and more people are really looking at, okay, what's this product I'm putting on my skin? What's in it, right? Are, are there things that I don't want in my body, you know, that are getting into me through these different products? So, so you guys have the, you have your own product line, mm -hmm. skincare product line, right? Yep. Um, the, the actual airbrush machine yeah. is patent pending mm -hmm. and and then the um i guess the what would you call it the the actual solution solution I mean, that yeah, uses, the juice so it's either the juice the juice <laughs> i like the juice the juice has got a good ring to it yeah. so the juice is proprietary correct yes yes okay yep now so you is there one, get one is there anything else close to this, right? Like, let's say Go Glow's not in Wilmington, North Carolina, where I live yet. Like, is there anything else that's similar? Are you guys really blazing the trail yeah. to a new industry here? Yeah, the the industry right now, I think that you know it kind of paints itself uh, as a brush of we have our own uh, skincare line. There's about an 800 pound grill in the room that's making the solution for literally hundreds of different salons and that sort of thing. And they're just slapping their label on it because we have to really be honest in the sense of how I built go glow. I built it like bootstrapped, still bootstrapped. Yeah. The fact is, is that I took all the money, I made all the sacrifices and I put it back into the company. And so building a solution line is extremely expensive. Building, I can only imagine building your own skincare. Every product is very expensive. And then you go to building an, an actual overspray booth. Like, so there's not going to be a whole lot of people that have invested that much into making sure this is done right and playing the long game. There's one thing about me is I play the long game. I am the most patient. I will sacrifice, but I will do it right. And I will play that long game to make sure three, five years down the road, there's things that I did, you know, 10 years ago that set me up for like, if the FDA does come, it could be in five years, it could be 10 years, but I know it's coming, right? Yeah. I need to make sure. Yeah, It's only a matter of time, I assume. Yeah. But yeah, so there, I mean, there's something to be said for customer experience, right? And and I, I this is something I remind candidates of all the time, you know, when they're looking at different franchise businesses, like, look, you know, the, the type of business most people really want to be in is the type of business that doesn't need everyone to be their customer and is not trying to be everything to everyone. Like, you want to specialize mm -hmm. and, you know, you want to be in most instances in a business that's that's higher end right? right and you know charges a premium and you're not going to have to compete based on price and and trying to be the lowest cost option yeah. out there so you know I, I think that probably really uh applies here you know you don't you're you're in minneapolis right you don't need every person right. in minneapolis to come in and get a go-go you need a, a loyal following mm -hmm who are going to what tell their friends, tell their family, they're going to go out, they're going to get compliments, you know, after they've come and gotten a go glow and they're going to tell people about it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really neat concept. I want to make sure we, we do have, if, if you can stick with me for 
a few more minutes. Do you have a hard stop? I know we're coming up on the top of the hour. Nope, I'm good. Okay. Um, Cause I want to, so we kind of looked at it from a, a customer standpoint right now, you know, let's kind of shift gears and look at it from a business model standpoint from, you know, a, a franchise owner's perspective. So, you know, you mentioned you've, you've got, you know, some, some franchisees that are from European wax. Um, I know you have some franchisees that are, you know, very successful, very large operators and other franchise brands. Um, what is kind of the, the role of the franchise owner? Like how should the franchise owner spend most of their time? Is it flexible, right? Like I imagine like your European wax franchisees are probably not working, you know, in your studio mm -hmm. uh, day in, day out. Um, is that an option for some franchisees if they want to, or like, how do you really want the franchise owner spending their time? Yeah, for right now, you know, giving um, paying homage to the fact that we are an emerging brand, we are yep. looking for people who who are who do want to roll up their sleeves and they and they do want to um, connect with their customer base. They do want to do the grassroots. They because GoGlo is not a national brand right now, but Go, what GoGlo offers is incredible. But you have to get people in, you know. And so what sure. we've we I've really stressed in in the fact that GoGlo was built is built on word of mouth, right? I didn't mm -hmm. do the marketing. So it's all word of mouth. And so we really want our owners now to be out in the community making those relationships because people want to support business owners. They want to support Melanie. You know, they want to support yeah. Jessica. That's who they want. They want to see a face. And then so, you know, right now we look for people who are who are really either Uber experienced, they have a team. Like we have a, a very large franchisor from another system that that did take down quite a quite a few go glows. But that's a rarity, right? So most of ours are the ones that are like they they love the brand, they they believe in the brand, they know what the brand feels like, and you know can see the response of our customers really raising us up. You know, as far as Minnesota, you couldn't start, you couldn't pick like anywhere in the United States to start a spray tan company that could be worse than Minnesota, right? We're <laughs> like we're literally in snowsuits like eight months of the year, like nobody's seeing skin. However, yeah, you don't care if you're tan or not, right? And so I know that a lot of people take a look at the FTD and they took take a look at the numbers and they're just like, well, if that can happen in Minnesota, like let's look deeper into this business. Um, and there you go. It's a yeah. super service. It's it's a super. You know, I say it's easy, and they're you know, my brother in law uh, laughs and he's like, Mel, you you got to stop saying it's easy. It just you made it look easy, right? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, fine. But at the same time, it's it's a single service. We've perfected it. We've drilled into every single you know process possible. We have a learning management system that we've built out. So if everywhere from the owner down to the employee, your training system is is your entire training program is at least seventy percent done for your employee online. All the ingredients, oh, wow. everything. And then so once you know the training is quicker. It used to be twenty hours for us for every single employee. You know, that's if they're picking it up quickly. Now it's, you know, we can get them on the learning management system. They can learn all of the products and everything. And then, you know, in person, it's the technical skill of spraying because we have our own yeah. proprietary way of doing that as well. Um, yeah. So, you know, right now it's it's a different owner than it will be in three years, 100%. Yeah. But it sounds like primarily you want your owners kind of being the face of the business in the community, not necessarily... Right. In the location, spraying. Right. right. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Day in, day out. Yeah. We have probably good. Probably good if they know how to do it, right? And yeah. you know, it's not like a foreign concept to right. them. But um, they're they're, you know, other than building and and managing the team, and obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the the business itself, you know, monitoring the the key metrics and you know making sure uh, big adjustments don't need need to be made. It's, it's getting out into the community, creating awareness. And, you know, to me, this is, this is such a good business for grassroots and word of mouth. Like I'm, I'm sure there's a place for paid marketing and advertising. And, you know, if you advertise to the right people, you know, it's, it's obviously going to help and it's going to create some awareness and, and right. drive some business, but this is prime, you know, to me for just, you know, get out, get people to try it, get people talking about it, right. create a buzz yeah. on social media and, um, right. and, and people will, will start coming. And, um, what's, what's kind of, I'm sure this kind of varies from one market to the next, like you said, Minnesota's mm -hmm. long, harsh winters mm -hmm. where I live, it's, you know, you're, you're definitely in like short sleeves and, yep. and stuff mm -hmm. a lot more out of the year. How many times would someone typically come in say a year? 
uh, yeah. as, a, as a customer. Yeah. So we had it broken down. It's about um, 30% of our clients will come once a year. They're coming for spring break. You know, they're, they're usually the busy moms who are just kind of in the weeds with kids. Like I've been there, like I have an, an eight year old and an 11 year old. So I'm coming out of the weeds, however, but yeah. you know, when you're in it, you're in it. Right. And so oh, yeah. she'll, she'll come about once a year. She'll make sure she has her go glow for her, her spring break and everything. Um, and then, you know, you have another 30% who come about once a month and then, oh, wow. you, okay. You know, yeah, exactly. And then um, the other is about 20, 25% are going to do about four times a year. And then you have your diehards, right? And they're coming twice a month. Boom. Love yeah. the diehards. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's, that's really cool. And so uh, what size location are, are you kind of recommending um, for the for the final location, because you guys are also doing something unique that that I think you kind of alluded to earlier. But you know, for the yes, for the, the permanent per location, what uh, what kind of is the ideal size? The ideal size is fifteen hundred square feet. So we are competing oh, with wow. a whole lot of other concepts. However, but it's a it's a small footprint. Um, you can pack in um, quite a bit per square foot of um, you know output, and it's about six spray rooms. Um, so, okay. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's not a huge space at all. No. 1500 square right. feet. And you can have, so you could, in theory, you could be servicing six customers simultaneously right. out of 1500 square feet. Right. That's my, huge. Yeah. My Edina store, um, it, it's 15, like 1570 and we have eight spray rooms and we are packed eight spray rooms spraying, um, in our busy season. Wow. It's bananas. And what, what does a, uh, and again, I know this varies, but, um, is are most like, so, you know, you kind of said, uh, you got your diehards that are coming a couple times a month. You got people coming once a month. Like, are they just paying per visit? Do you have membership options where, you know, they can buy a package X number of sessions mm -hmm. per month? Yeah. What does that look like? This goes back to, you know, when I was building the company, you know, I started around 2010, 2011, and I was really just, we talked about it earlier, like just really trying to tear myself away from the tanning industry. And so at that time, it was before boutique fitness. And so memberships were always like, did you get a tanning membership? You know, so I was like, I'm never doing memberships, you know, so I oh, okay. yeah. until just literally uh, three months ago, we released packages. Um, and I guess I just- Memberships are cool again. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> but I think it's just because I had my head down, I was just working and everything was doing, was doing great that I did think about doing memberships but now memberships are second nature everybody has some well, boutique fitness and and they're convenient and they're easy and you know you get to, we get uh, discounts on our skincare service they're just easy right and so yeah. um you know we just launched it and uh, it's it's getting a really good um response and our franchisees um they launched a founding membership program too so you know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I wish I'd have done it sooner, but at the same time, it's like, I, I, I was head down working and we were doing great. So <laughs> not only that, but it, it makes sense to me that, you know, like at that time you, you didn't want to do a membership, right? If there was negative connotations yes. out there because of some of these tanning bed memberships and other spray tan memberships, like it, it was probably the right call 100%. Uh, to not roll out a membership, right? Cause that may have turned some people away literally membership wow. was like owned by the tanning industry and the tanning beds like if you had a membership yeah. you had a tanning bed it wasn't at a club it was you know it was just like that's a tanning bed yeah no that makes sense and then so you know a typical location six uh mm -hmm. um spray right. rooms how, how many employees do you need to staff you know that for a typical day is it one per spray room do you need someone at a front desk yeah so we don't do a front desk it's just our specialists um good i like that appointment only um yeah. we don't but generally people aren't going to walk up and be like i want to get a spray tan you have to prepare for these things you have to plan for them women know that men know that um and so what's really great i did not know that but i do now well yeah <laughs> <Not you. owner. laughs> um but what's great is that you you open up rooms meaning like you add another staff member um as the appointments come in so you have mm. you have a great control of of, um, you know, you don't, you don't open up all six rooms, have six, you know, girls sitting there and, you know, maybe an appointment comes here and there, right. You're yeah, yeah. up as the rooms, as the columns fill. And so it has a great control for, um, 
for, for labor costs and that sort of thing. These girls make great money. They make hourly, they make tips, they can make, make commission. I think the average, if she's not even making her commission is about $35 an hour. So it's a, oh, quick, yeah. it's a fun atmosphere. Um, we have in Minnesota, I think I have um, for Edina, maybe 10 to 15 girls when during high season, um, okay. you know, covering those shifts, but we're open seven days a week in Edina for sure. Um, Chicago, same thing. Um, so yeah, you just, and the, the great thing about it is, is it, it's not going to catch you off guard. You'll be able to add staff. It'll be very controlled growth, you know? And so, um, it's, it's, it's not like you're staffing an empty store. Yeah. Which, which is huge. And I'm glad you pointed that out. Cause I think a lot of times that's how people imagine it's going to be right. Like they might, you know, come and visit you for a discovery day and see your location with eight rooms rocking and rolling. And they're sitting there like, wow, that's kind of a scary thought to go home and right. uh, have to hire this many people and then hope I can keep them busy. Um, do the, do they need any special, uh, I know you talked a little bit about training, but outside of the training you're giving them, you know, do they need any, are there any uh, specific qualifications or are you looking for any certain type of experience? Yeah. Um, spray tanning is unregulated, meaning that it has nothing to do with the board of cosmetology in any state. Um, there's okay. a, two states that require, I think, like a weekend class or some sort of certification. It's kind of just basically a money run um, for that board. <laughs> yeah. But oh, um, yeah. what we look for is we look for people who um, can with people and people who have great personalities, servers, teachers. We have a lot of teachers working for us. Um, they like to kind of get away from the classroom and just be around um, healthy, happy Adults. people. And there's a huge <laughs> dynamic between, you know, when I worked in probation and working with criminals and like all that, I didn't realize until you're around happy, healthy people that, oh, there's really great people around, right? And yeah. so I think the same thing, not that, not that, you know, you know, students aren't happy, healthy people, but they're, they're, they're uh, definitely a stress drain. And I think being around in a go glow is just, people are happy to be there. Our clientele are phenomenal. Like they're, it's just a happy, great place to be. Um, and so that attracts a lot of people and a lot of college students. It's a great, I wish I had it, this job in college. It was great money. You yeah. Know? It sounds easy. like they, they can make really good money. And, you know, this is something that, that I spend a lot of time talking to my candidates about, right, is, you know, the the whole why behind, you know, this motivation to get into business for themselves. And, you know, it's why, you know, I call, you know, I name my business, the, the podcast is Path to Freedom. Like freedom is always, you know, like usually the number one driver uh, for someone to make a move into business ownership. And so you really want to evaluate okay, what's my day-to-day -day gonna be like if I own this business, right? And if you want something that's gonna be lifestyle friendly and give you good control of your schedule, but yeah. also not just constantly be a stressor, like look real mm -hmm. closely at, you know, okay, what what is this business providing and how do my customers respond to it, right? Like yeah. the two franchises yes. we've owned, you know, our stuff's all in kind of home, home improvement, home services, but you know, one is uh shelf genie, right? And we, we make these awesome custom pull out shelving solutions and, you know, awesome custom closet systems. And, you know, it's things that customers want, they don't necessarily yeah. need them and they're high end, they're expensive, they're custom, but they're really, really good. And our clients get so excited you know, once they're in like this, you know, you know, mistakes happen from time to time. Something gets damaged in shipping. Something's running like there's, yeah. there's some stress, right? But the overwhelming majority of our interactions with customers are happy mm -hmm. uh, conversations, not negative, stressful ones. The other franchise we own, which we actually sold last year was an insulation business. Nobody's excited. Mm. to have insulation put in their house, right? And it's not fun to talk about. If you're spending money on insulation, you're not looking forward to it. We right. worked with builders and contractors and you want to talk about stress. Like, you know, it was a pretty good business for us, but right. my, my wife and I looked at each other one day and we're like, this is, this is taking us in the opposite direction of what we started going down this path for in the first place. And you know, we need to move back in that direction, especially while the kids are still young. Like 
We don't need yeah. this stress. No. Uh, we can make plenty of money in other businesses that are not this stressful and don't have this many headaches. So um, I, I see that with GoGlo for sure. And, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that you kind of highlighted that. Um, yeah. And there's, we have um, many uh, franchisees who, uh, when they come to training, they've hired a general manager or they've hired their first employee and we train that employee. So no, we don't have everybody, you know, every business owner in there spraying. They know how to just in case something should happen. But me personally, I have not worked, um, you know, a shift in go glow in, I don't know, eight, nine years. Right. Cause you're, you're good. You, the, you, you want, you want to make sure that, you know, you, you can hire the great girls and it's, it's a very co controlled, fun place to be. They take care they take pride in it. They're independent. Um, they love the brand. They do want to do the best for it. And another thing with, with, you know, the, the feeling of a go glow and the, um, user generated contact, like our Instagram is our clients. Right. And so our clients have, like I said earlier, like they've just sort of risen go glow up and they hold it very close. I know in Minnesota and Chicago, people are very, like very attached to our story and, and attached to our brand. And I think that's, that's what you're going to bring to your community too, is you're going to have a whole set of, of, yeah of young professionals who are just like go glow is is it's it's, it's changing because it's changing the game and it, it's you're going to bring something to your community that they didn't number one they didn't know they they needed until they get it on their skin and then they're telling every single person that's the thing with beauty and that's the thing with with like new treatments or whatever you're going to tell your friends you're going to tell your sister and it goes like wildfire. So that word of mouth, once you get a go-go on the skin, it's like, forget it. You're, you're, you've got five people right there, five new clients. Hey everyone, we'll be right back to the episode, but one quick note, you know, success doesn't happen in a vacuum. So if you'd like to learn more, you wanna go deeper and interact with like-minded people, I'd love to have you join the free Path to Freedom Facebook group. You can join by going to pathtofreedom.com backslash group and become a part of the Path to Freedom community. All right, back to the episode. So when when I when you guys did your launch call, mm -hmm. it must have been sometime in the afternoon my time and like my wife and you know one of the girls that that works for her, mm -hmm. who's a good friend of ours too. Uh, they were they were here, and so anyways, I I come down from my office after the launch call, and I'm like, hey, what do you guys think of this? Like I had them pull up GoGlow. I was like, you know, they they're saying it's it's you know number one, it's it's healthier right it's not toxic mm -hmm. but you know you're not sticky it doesn't smell bad you don't have to wait so long to to shower or at least rinse off or whatever and they were both like it sounds too good to be true but if that's true hell yeah like yeah. you know it's, it it really is hitting all the the pain yeah. points you know that i think most people have and i and i totally see it being you know great word of mouth business mm -hmm. uh and very social media friendly like this there. this would be a fun, easy business to market on social media before and after pictures, yeah. you know, getting people to, to tag each other. And, um, yeah, it seems like it plays really well to yeah. social media. Yeah. It's, it's so. wild, especially like, you know, when I talked about earlier about the long runway and, and the young kids are during prom season, we are absolutely packed. The lobby, is, I bet. if you didn't go, if you didn't get go to go to go to get your like prom, it's like one of those things where like, why didn't I see you at GoGo? You know, where, where did you go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not good enough. Yeah. Like, everyone's got to go to GoGo. So it's You're going to get dumped the day before the prom to <laughs> to someone that did get their GoGo done. Um, <laughs> so talk about the pop up because because I want to make sure we hit on that. Yeah. Uh, you, you alluded to it earlier, but, but kind of explain that to us. Yeah. So we, we allow our partners once they found their real estate. So we want to know exactly where the lease is signed, where, where your, where your storefront is going to go so that you can choose a salon suite, um, concept around you. That's close enough. So if you're, you're building your business, you're building your base, you're training these people to come to that area. So we make sure that we have a lease signed, um, on your storefront and then you're able to, uh, we ship out a machine and it's a, you know, one room salon. We have a concept, um, open for, uh, in Minneapolis here to show our, our prospects, but it's, it's amazing. It's just in, you know, a salon suite and you're able to build your clientele. You're able to get brand awareness while you're doing a storefront build out. Cause we all know yeah. those are nightmares. They could take six, eight months, you know, easy, and yeah. small spaces and it's such an easy build. It doesn't matter nowadays. It's just, they're just, it's just a rough process. It's very stressful. So if you can take your mind off of building out and just watching money leave, right. You want to be like, I want to be building my brain. I want to build the brand. I want money to come in. I want to, I want this on everybody's skin. And so you get the chance to do that in a salon suite. It's so true. 
uh, that because even you know if if these pop ups are you know single room, I'm, I'm sure they're making some money, right? But but nowhere near what the potential is once you're you know into your actual location and you know six or more rooms. But just that mindset, right, where you you're seeing money fly out. Right. For such a long period of time before you're even in a position exactly. to do any business and generate yeah. any revenue, it can be discouraging. It can be exhausting, and and people can freak out during that period. Right. So, I want to make sure the audience kind of kind of follows what you you said there because this is you know obviously a storefront business. Yes, you know. So in most franchises that are brick and mortar, you know you're you're probably at minimum six months, but more realistically, nine to 12 months for most brick and mortar concepts to yeah. actually open doors for business, you know, once you've signed the franchise agreement. And, and a lot of it depends on how big of a location, how hard is it to find the right location and actually sign a lease? And then how complicated is the the build out? And GoGlo is simpler, you know, than a lot of franchises out there as we've already talked about you don't need a huge space and and it sounds like it's a fairly simple build out but it's still probably going to be minimum six months and that's if everything kind of just goes perfectly and you, right think about the the process of you know you you basically you research you do all your research and you finally fall in love with the brand that you want to be in and, you, and you're just so excited about it you sign your franchise agreement and then you go into real estate and then you're just like oh and you've got six eight months and you just sort of you, you just for go glow we get to keep it on that high note like great. Yeah. We've, had, we've had franchisees within 90 days they're opening up their salon suite like that's super fun and exciting and they've they've kept that excitement and that enthusiasm and that whole thing where you know we say to them we're like Hey, just so you know, real estate and um, construction are, are the worst things to, to like any human to go through as a business owner. They're just they're yep. just awful. But at the same time, distract yourself with building your lo like location already. Like it's, it's I love that a really great feeling, and it's a good opportunity. And you know, it it just it it lightens the load. It lightens the load a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I can only imagine it does. And and it also primes you, right? I mean, because like we've already talked about, this is once people try it and, and love it, they're going to tell people about it, right? So if you can start that ball rolling, you know, three, four, five months before you happen, you open your actual location, that's that's a game changer in terms of just how quickly you can ramp the business up. And I think most of the listeners probably know what a salon suite is, but you're basically just leasing you know, a room in a salon suite. There's Sola salons out there. There's my salon suite. There's, you know, five or six at least kind of national right. uh, brands. Though I assume those are not very difficult to find. Well, um, can, yeah, exactly. They're not difficult to find, but I can tell you right now, they're almost all banning spray tan artists from being in there because they don't have the overspray booth to protect the, the HVAC, to protect everything, right? So as they've, so many of them are like, we're not letting spray tanning into this business. And then we say to them, but it's a go glow. Let's show you the equipment. Let us show you that I literally oh, wow. have a suite that is painted all white in a hundred square foot room. And the room is still pristine white. You know, wow. and the other beautiful thing about a salon suite is you're dropped, as I call it, into a beauty nest. So you're dropped right there as the only spray tan artist. And it's a go glow. Oh, yeah. Sexy brand. And you look good and you feel good. And then you get to network with all of these hairstylists, these skin specialists, these massage artists who are talking to their best clients. Their best clients are coming there multiple times and you have just landed right in the middle of it. Yeah. Incredible. That's <laughs> genius. Please tell me Eric Van Horn didn't come up with this because I don't- That's I started Go Glow. I picked a salon suite. I mean, I started right. Google and then my first location was a salon suite and we just busted up. Like it was nuts. And I was like, wait a minute, I need to build more. Like I need to build an actual storefront here. And so all right. that's how that's good. Cause if Eric, if it would have been Eric's idea, like, Hey Mel, if you thought of maybe uh, getting started in a, we'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> we, we would never hear the end of, uh, of, <laughs> of that but it's, they, they it's did, brilliant yeah they did hit on that when i was telling them my story and they're like wait go back you did what yeah yeah well it's not i mean i don't now that like we're talking about it i'm sitting here thinking of like other brands i work with that could pull something like that off it's not it's not going to work for every brick and mortar franchise obviously but so let me ask you this then is there a 
is there an angle where you know maybe once your your permanent location is built out is there a mobile component to this is there a, a component where you could maybe take it to i'm thinking like you know a bridal party yeah. or, or something yeah. like that you know that's how i started the business i started mobile that's right um, you, yeah pain points on the on a pop-up tent is that it, you feel like you're in a gas chamber with all of that solution and i will yeah. not do that to my clients ever again gotcha so makes sense will not be mobile well, it's funny as you talk about this, I think I mentioned we we owned an insulation franchise, right? Uh, which is not as fun to talk about as this <laughs> stuff, but we did a lot of spray foam mm -hmm. insulation, right? Which is, you know, you got these two 50 gallon drums with different chemicals. Mm -hmm. One's a resin, one's a chemical. They mix together, they come out of the gun. Uh, all types of protocol, right? From, mm -hmm. you know, respirators and yeah. safety equipment and you had to watch overspray. There's a certain technique. And, and if your employees aren't uh, well versed in that technique, you know, you lose a ton of product, which is very expensive. I mean, there's just all these things. Um, and I never thought about that for like traditional spray tans, mm -hmm. you know, where the overspray. And so like in the beginning, when you were talking about how your locations are white and that was intentional because no other spray tan place could have white walls because of the, the stain on it. I was like, wow that that makes a lot of sense so so these um, things that we are patent pending are um, a huge component of the future of GoGlo. i love it well it seems like you have a glowing future in front of you sorry <laughs> i had to yeah i had to do it i like it i had to do it i couldn't help myself <laughs> <laughs> um but no this is this is fascinating this is this is a really interesting concept and um I'm glad that you were were able to come and share more with me, share more with the audience. Um, is there anything I didn't ask you today that you think is worth noting or, or that you wish I would have asked you? No, I think we had an amazing conversation. I can't believe it's been this long because it's just like, it was so easy and so fun. And so like, great, great. And I, I love talking about GoGlo. I could sit and talk about it for hours. Um, and I just, you know, I'm excited for this whole opportunity. Yeah, well, it's. Uh, I think you've got a, a fast-paced uh, but uh, very bright future in front of you, and uh, look forward to working with you. Where should people go if they want to see if there's a GoGlo in their area? Find you on social media if they're interested in franchise opportunities. Call me first, but. Yes. Uh, yes. Where where else could they go? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you go to goglo.co, not .com. So it's goglow.co. Our Instagram is at underscore goglow and LinkedIn goglow, G-O-G-L-O-W. Sweet. We'll put all that in the show notes, make it easy for people to find. And I really would encourage people to go check out like their Instagram page. Um, Cause I think seeing this is, is a part of it, right? You've heard you know, Mel described the location and the the technique and, you know, the the before and after pictures that I've seen are, are pretty impressive. Um, so go check it out. And um, Mel, thank you so much for being here and keep up the great work with GoGlo. Thank you.